Yo, 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 what is up guys? Welcome back to a brand new F1 2020 video. Today I'm gonna show my Silverstone short world record in time trial. Um, right here preparing the lap, uh, starting it quite well, not, not really any wheel spin coming out of that last corner. Taking a wide line to start my lap, heading into turn one, opening it up slightly and then cut it as much as you can without getting an invalidation and then breaking where the curb starts right here. Use a little bit of the outside curb, then on the inside, short shift to fifth. Got a little bit of oversteer there, keep it in fifth, and then down to fourth right here, and use all the track available. Uh, really easy to get an invalidation there. We were really, really on the limit. Uh, up to eighth gear on this straight, and then breaking at the start of that curb. Now actually quite a bit after it, down to sixth gear, and then up to seventh, uh, once the car is straight again, breaking at the start of the curb, down to third gear. Short shift to fourth and then up to fifth uh, on that right hander on the apex and then a short line to the finish. It's a 42.9, um, only four thousands faster than Josh Idowu. Uh, if, I s if I say his last name correct, I always struggle getting his last name right. But right there, you can see P1 of the world, 42.968. Um, 10 kilos of fuel on board, you can't change that in time trial, uh, you never can. And then three seven wings. Um, felt pretty good. I tried some difference in time trial. Didn't really get it right. Other than that, uh, 50 53 differential. Um, tried 52 off, but felt a little bit too oversteer. We didn't get it right. And then right, all the way to the right on the front camber. And then left, left, left. So 250 uh, degrees on the front camber. 19 springs, 211 roll bar, 63 right height. Um, I don't know why the ride height is so high on the front, but um, well, it seems to work around Silverstone. 100% brake pressure, 50% brake bias, um, and then minimum tire pressure. Uh, so yeah, ride height was a bit weird, but well, uh, everyone else was using it, so I just copied and pasted the setup in uh, from the leader. So now I'm going to go a little bit more into detail, or at least extremely into detail, on how I did this lap. So almost on the grass on the left to try and prepare the lap as good as possible um, and then open up this one this right hander and then coming out of this corner you can see I take quite a wide line a uh, wide line um, coming out of here to carry more speed into the lap so you can run more distance carry or create more speed into my flying lap and then up to eight gear going into turn one you can see almost touching the gravel on the left to open up the turn one because you don't want to scrub any speed off and then you want to turn in quite early as um, you want to use all the truck available you can see we're only just about touching the white line on the left uh, I'm quite sure the rear is touching slightly more um, but we're really close in the validation which is what you need uh, being on the limit around the lap like this and then on turn two cut it all the way until the grass um, on that curb and then breaking at the start of this curb zone uh, as you can see right there and then going through here you can see using a lot of the dentry curb not realistic but it works so well on that one game uh, and also good benchmark there the 50 meter board uh, as turn in going into turn three then this is the point where I come off the brakes uh, so just before the apex, getting really close to that sausage on the inside, you really w do not want to hit that. Uh, so I go back onto the throttle on that apex, uh, short shifting very early up to 50, you can see only 137 kph coming out of there, uh, and we're already in fifth gear. This is the point where I go to full throttle, don't really, or can't really go any earlier, as just don't have the grip to do that, and then on the left, all the way into the sausage curb. Because um, you need to prepare that right hander right there as much as possible. This is the breaking point. Uh, very important here. Keep it in fifth, as you need to go down to fourth for this one. And if you go up to sixth, you have to downshift really quickly and awkwardly down to fourth for this one. This is where I come off the brakes again, um, using all the track available, and almost instantly I go back on throttle, as you could see right there. Now this is a difficult one. You, you would at first sight you could or you would think this is track limits, but my right hand, uh, right tire, basically, is still touching. And that is where the real track starts again. So, it, because it's shaped in like a kind of a triangle, the track limits, as you can see there on the right, that's that's the line of the track limits. But then on the left, 
that's where the actual track starts again. So we were so close on getting an invalidation, but because that left front tire started going into uh, the real track again, that's why it wasn't an invalidation. And then push it all the way into the grass here, let it run out wide, open the DRS up to 8 gear uh, on this straight. See, we are actually 2.4 hundreds down on Josh Ido heading into here. You can see we start turning in before the braking zone. We are probably still like a good 20 meters away before we start braking. So turn in before you start braking. This is where we start braking. So yeah, I would say around 20 meters uh, after that. Don't want to brake too hard because you need the momentum going through this corner. So now putting a little bit more brake pressure on to rotate the car down to 6th gear and this is so important to really need to keep so much momentum so basically as soon as I come off the brake as you can see in the right bottom I start going throttle again and I go so aggressive back onto the throttle um, to get acceleration in again uh, as I'm putting a really awkward face lol but um, <laughs> yeah now I'm going full throttle to here pushing it to the absolute limit on this exit you can see like a millimeter away from track limits. Uh, that's what you need in this corner. Still the right front, still touching uh, the wide line, braking where the curb starts pretty much um, for the last chicane. And then use a little bit of this curb. Um, didn't fully use it. Didn't feel really comfortable doing that. And then you can use a little bit of the sausage on the inside, but you don't want to do it too much. Uh, so this is where I start going onto initial throttle again. Um, and then I short shift very early to fourth, and then basically I go up to fifth as soon as I hit this curb, this black and white curb. And then you really do not want to touch this red sausage on the inside because it will unsettle the car and it will be very hard to keep control um, being so aggressive onto the throttle. This is where I go back to full throttle and then basically this orange sausage curb on the outside uh, you can use it to lean on it a little bit. Uh, use the outside of the tire to lean on it and it basically makes it easier to control the car. And now we're doing the opposite to what we did uh, starting the lap. We want now a short line, so less meters. Um, you will carry a lot less speed into your next lap, but this is a hot lap, so we do not need that. And um, that's basically the world record around Silverstone short. Um, it's very very close as you can see uh, on the leaderboard me Josh and Alessio are separated by I think one and a half hundred more or less maybe two hundred so it's very very close so hard to get right but anyway I hope you guys enjoyed this track guide on how to be faster on Silverstone short and see you guys next time ciao